from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Johnny. Well, long time, Pat. What's on your mind? At the moment, 120000 bucks. Hey, you're really thinking big these days. No, correction. Worrying big. Well, I guess if I had 120,000 clams, I'd worry, too. Look, if we had it, I wouldn't be worrying. So who does have it? Thomas Chase. Coming in. A partner in a New York investment syndicate, Everson and Chase. Real dignified outfit up till now. Chase embezzled the money? We think so. So what do you want with me? I'm no expert in forcing confessions. Johnny, you can't make a guy confess if you can't find him. Oh? Chase has jumped his bail. He's disappeared. I'll be right over. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut... Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Phantom Chase matter. Expense account item one, a dollar even, taxi, from my apartment to the offices of Universal Adjustment, where Pat McCracken was waiting for me, with a worried look and a handful of papers. Well, how can you figure it, Johnny? An outfit like Everson and Chase goes along for years without a blemish on the record, and then Bluey, one of them, turns sour. Well, that's what makes horse races, I guess. Yeah, that's also what gives bonding companies headaches. Yeah. What's the background, Pat? No, it's all in here. Everson and Chase, investment brokers. Real high-class clientele. Partnership? Oh, yeah. George Everson, senior partner. Uh, 42 years old. Pillar of society. Married? No, a widower. Wife died three, four years ago. This Thomas Chase is the junior partner, then? Yeah. He's 38. He's a big fellow, clean cut. All conference football player in college. You know, that sort of thing. Everything in his favor. Looks, personality, intelligence, ability. Why, Johnny, huh? Why a guy like that? Oh, you're asking the wrong fellow. I've seen enough ambassadors, though, to know they come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. What turns a man like that sour, anyway? Well, you know the stock reasons as well as I do, Pat. Gambling debts, a woman. Incidentally, is Chase married? Now, that's another thing I don't get. What do you mean? I know one of the stock reasons for embezzling is another woman. If that was Chase's motive, he's nuttier than a fruitcake. Why anyone who had a wife like Lola Chase would even look at another woman is beyond me. Like that, huh? Like that. Impresses me as a real, real fine woman. And has got the looks to go with it. Well, you'll be talking to her. You'll see for yourself. Always a pleasure, Pat. Now, about the money that's missing, $120,000, you see. Yeah, more or less. Currency, checks, negotiable security. Well, look, a deal like that didn't just take place overnight. It must have been going on for a long time. No doubt of it. How did Chase manage it? Well, Everson can fill you in on that better than I could. The senior partner. Yeah. Now, he's still not willing to go along with us that Chase is guilty. I think he's pretty concerned about the company name, which is understandable enough. Well, maybe he's got something. Yeah. Well, you better save yourself some time, Johnny. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning you just answer me one question. Why, what is it? Would an innocent man jump bail? Expense item two, $16.20, transportation and incidentals to New York to the office of Everson and Chase. George Everson was just as Pat McCracken had described him. Early 40s, a little gray at the temples, a healthy tan, the real solid citizen type. Handsome and right now unhappy. Ah... Uh... I still can't believe it, Mr. Dollar. Tom Chase, of all people. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was like a younger brother. I nursed him through the best graduate business school in the East. I took him in with me. Yeah. Um, how long ago did he become a partner in the firm, Mr. Everson? Four, five years. Yeah, five years next month it would be. And Lola. Poor Lola. His wife? What? If I ever saw an ideal marriage, that was it. As far as I could see, she'd... Well, she's all that a man could want. Maybe not for Tom Chase... Well, maybe not, but I certainly don't understand it. Tell me, how was Chase able to get away with this deal? The embezzlement? Oh. Well, to begin with, Mr. Dollar, our firm has always maintained a very fluid relationship with its clients. Now, frequently, we're buying or selling for them, or both, very rapidly. In a situation like that, the client places a great deal of confidence and trust in us, and we've always had the utmost of both from them. 
Yeah, at least we did have. I see. Well, anyway, in a situation like ours, it is possible for a clever man to juggle figures. And that's what Tom Chase did. I mean. Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, more and more lately, he'd taken over the personal management of some of our best accounts. Oh, sort of taking them under the wing, huh? I encouraged him to. But if I'd realized I was only putting temptation in Tom's way, I'd... Well... How did you find out what he'd been up to, Mr. Everson? Well, Tom had formed a kind of pattern in his accounts. He specialized in handling those clients of ours who were primarily interested in growth investments. Uh, growth? Long range. You know, buy and hold it for quite a while. Oh, yeah, I see. But one of those clients suddenly decided to liquidate his holdings on short notice. The account turned up short, then? Quite short. So, of course, I immediately ordered a full-scale audit. The results of that brought the district attorney's office into it. The rest, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I must say that on paper, he'd done a very convincing job. You see, now, here are the files on all his accounts. <clears throat> Pardon me. He'd recorded each transaction carefully and correctly and had written up memos on all of them. Mm -hmm. These memos, they in his handwriting? Yes, they are. May I take one of them with me? Yeah, certainly. There you are. Thanks. Mr. Emerson, as I understand it, Tom Chase wouldn't talk after his arrest. No. That was the most frustrating part of it. If he'd have given us some kind of explanation, anything. But he refused to make a statement of any kind. I see. I arranged for his bail, of course, and tried to do what I could, but... But he jumped bail and disappeared. Yes, I'm afraid so. This was four days ago, I understand. Yes. All right, one more thing, Mr. Everson. Had he acted at all differently lately? Well, I, I hadn't noticed anything, but apparently his wife, Lola, had. Oh. Yeah, I had dinner with him a week or so before, well, before this thing happened. Lola got me off to one side for a moment and asked me if I'd noticed any change in Tom lately. Change? Yeah, she said that he'd seemed rather moody and preoccupied. Well, that made me realize that he had seemed a trifle tense around the office. Apparently, he'd told her he'd been working extra hard. Yeah, I suppose that should have been a danger sign to me, but... Uh, well, I, I was afraid I... So I just passed it off. I kidded her out of it. Yeah. Well, thanks for the information, Mr. Everson. It's little enough, I'm afraid. Where do you start looking in a case like this? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. First, I think I'm going to have a talk with Mrs. Chase, find out all I can about her husband's habits, likes and dislikes, so on. Sometimes you pick up a lead that way. Well, you'll probably run him down sooner or later. I understand you have quite a reputation at that sort of thing. Um, I wonder if you'd do me a favor, Mr. Dollar. Sure. As I say, you'll probably find him, and as for the money, well, I guess whatever part of it we recover, we should be grateful for. Well, that's about the size of it, I guess. But frankly... I'd rather not see Tom Chase again, unless it can't be avoided. Yeah, I understand. But there is one question I guess I'll always wonder about. Maybe you can find the answer for me. What is it? Why did he do it? Why? Expense account item 31250, cocktails and dinner for Lola Chase and myself. I figured she might relax a little more that way, and believe me, taking Lola Chase to dinner was no chore. She was everything Pat McCracken and George Everson had said she was. Tom Chase must have had some pretty powerful reasons to walk out on her. Now, Lola and I made general conversation throughout dinner. She was poised, but pretty subdued. After we finished eating, I steered the conversation around to her husband. I don't know that there's anything I can tell you that I haven't already told the district attorney's office, Mr. Dollar. Whatever information I can furnish... Well, what I mainly want to know is... Oh, what sort of person was your husband? Tom? Yeah. I guess I'm the wrong one to be answering that, Mr. Dollar. Mm hmm? I thought I knew Tom better than anyone in the world. But as it turned out, I didn't know him at all. Funny how you can live with someone for years and never. Yeah. So when you ask me what sort of person he was, I. I guess I have to say I really don't know. Well, how about his hobbies, likes and dislikes, uh, you know, that sort of thing? Well, he liked to play golf. Uh -huh. He did some sailing. And he had quite a collection of records and an elaborate hi-fi set. Oh, what kind of records? Jazz, mostly. He used to play them by the hour. I must say, he turned them up a little too loudly for me. <laughs> but then I understand that women's ears weren't built for hi-fi or something like that. Yeah, tell me, Mrs. Chase, did you notice uh, much change in his behavior recently? 
Yes, I, I did. And it upset me. Well, what sort of change? Well, for one thing, he became rather moody. I guess you'd call it. He seemed to have something on his mind all the time. Several times he stayed out late at night and said he was working. I see. And then there was the thing about our vacation. What was that? Well, we'd planned a little trip. But at the last moment he told me he couldn't go. He insisted I make the trip without him. I didn't want to. But he insisted. So I finally went. Alone. It was when I got back that I found out he'd been arrested. Where did you go on this trip? Martha's Vineyard. Uh huh. Well, thanks very much for the information, Mrs. Chase. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. You've been very kind. When and if you find Tom, well... Yes? Well, I guess I'm just foolish enough to think he... He still might be innocent. I took Mrs. Chase to her apartment and then went back to my hotel. The big question was, where to start? What did I really know about Tom Chase? I had a picture of him and a specimen of his handwriting. I knew his hobbies. But what did it all add up to? Oh, Mr. Riverson. Yes, I'm sorry to barge in on you at this hour, Mr. Dollar. No, not at all. Come in, come in. Thanks. Mr. Dollar, you probably think I'm crazy, and I know it's a very slim chance, but it is a chance. What are you talking about? Take a look at this newspaper. Right here. Huh? A feature article on jazz in New Orleans. This picture taken in a bar down there. The old guy with the trumpet? No, no, no. In the background, the people sitting at the bar. Look at this man right here. Oh. His face is half turned away, and it looks like he hasn't shaved for a while. Mr. Dollar, that's Tom Chase. You sure? You can't see much of his face. I know, I know. But when you've been around a man for several years, you notice little things about him. Little mannerisms. Like what? Well, look, look at the way he's got his head sort of cocked to one side. Well, that's just the way Tom always did when he was listening to something. And look at his hand resting on the bar like one finger was pointing at something. Wow. Now, that's the way Tom held his hand. And look, he's got one leg sort of drawn up. That is exactly the way Tom used to sit at a bar. Oh, but Mr. Everson, any number of men, and that picture isn't too clear. I know. Maybe it's just a crazy, wild idea. But, Mr. Mr. Dollar, I'll bet on it that that man is Tom Chase. Crazy, wild idea? Maybe, maybe not. But it took less than a second to mentally flip a coin, and it came up New Orleans. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this story. Yeah, on to New Orleans, where the trail proves to be pretty cold, but warms up fast. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Everson, Mr. Dollar. 
Mark. Oh, yes, Mr. Everson. I've been thinking. Uh, I could have been wrong last night. You mean about the newspaper picture of the bar in New Orleans? Yes, that man in the background of the picture, the way he sits, the way he holds his hands and his head, it, it's so like Tom James. Yeah, that's what you told me last night. Yes, but this morning, well, you know, things always look different in the morning. After all, we can't see very much of his face in the picture. It, it might be just a wild goose chase. Well, I've been on plenty of them, believe me. But I've been thinking, too, Mr. Everson... Tom Chase embezzled $120,000 from your firm. New Orleans would be as good a place for him to hide as any. Besides which, his wife told me he was very fond of jazz, and there's certainly plenty of that down there. And you really think it might be a possibility? My plane leaves for New Orleans in an hour. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, Louisiana... To the Home Office, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. Item 5350, cab fare to the airport. George Everson was waiting for me at the passenger ramp. I'll tell you, Mr. Dollar, before I came out here to the airport, I called the insurance company you represent in this investigation. Oh? I told them if this trip to New Orleans did turn out to be just a wild goose chase, that I would assume your expenses. Oh, well, that's very considerate of you, Mr. Everson, but it isn't necessary. Now, an investigation's an investigation. My company's willing and anxious to exhaust all the possibilities. And from what you tell me, it's a good possibility that Tom Chase is hiding in New Orleans. Well, I hope so. Say, look, I've still got a minute or two before my plane loads. I want to make sure I've got all the facts straight. All right. Tom Chase was your junior partner. He began to specialize in those clients of yours who made long-term investments. Right. One of them decided to sell out suddenly, and you discovered there was a lot less in his account than there should have been. You ordered an audit and found that other accounts of Tom's had been juggled, too, to the tune of $120,000. Roughly. He was arrested but wouldn't talk. He got on on bail and jumped his bail and disappeared. Yes. All right. His wife, Lola, says that for some time before that, he was moody and tense. Well, uh, look, I didn't mention this to her, but I will tell you... Do you have any reason to think that Chase was interested in another woman? No, no reason at all. Good Lord, Mr. Dollar, with a wife like Lola, a man would be out of his mind to even think of anyone else. Well, I'm just mentioning a possibility, Mr. Everson. Yeah, I know, and I suppose that always is a possibility in embezzlement cases. But I certainly hope not in this one. The, the whole thing's been hard enough on Lola as it is. Yeah, did you tell her about the newspaper picture and that I'm going to New Orleans? No, I decided not to mention it to her for the present. I didn't want to get her hopes up. Although, heaven knows, she doesn't have much to hope for under the circumstances. Yeah. Oh, well, my plane's loading. Well, so long, Mr. Everson. Yes, best of luck, Mr. Dollar. I'll be waiting for word from you. Don't count on much. Oh, people have hit the jackpot on the first nickel. I know. But often than not, they turn up three lemons instead. Expense item six, $114, transportation and incidentals to New Orleans. I checked into the hotel and headed for the quarter. It hadn't changed much. Maybe a little more neon here and there. But the same streets, the same lattice work, the same noises. Then as I was walking along the sidewalk, something came hurtling down through the air at me. I jumped to one side. It was a basket at the end of a rope. A man from a little grocery store came out, put some food in the basket, and the lady in the upstairs window hauled it up again. <laughs> no, the quarter hadn't changed much. It was after dark when I located Ace's Castle, a bar that had been shown in the New York newspaper. There weren't many people inside. A few couples scattered around, a single or two at the bar, the bartender. And over in one corner, a small band making slow, sad music. I went over to the bar. Evening, sir. Hi. Scotch and soda, please. Okay. A little slow tonight, huh? It's early. It'll pick up. Here you are. Thanks. This is the bar that was in the New York newspaper picture, isn't it? Yes, sir. This is the place. That must have been good for business, huh? Tourists. 
this isn't a tourist spot. What kind of a spot is it? Well, people from around the street here come in, have a drink or two, nurse their own private troubles or forget them, and listen to Pops. Pops? Pops Harker, the old man over there with the trumpet. Oh. Hey, he plays like he means it. He does. Do you mind taking a look at this newspaper picture? So what about it? Well, this guy in the background sitting at the bar. Yeah. Know him? Not particularly. What do you mean, not particularly? A lot of guys come in here. Should I know all of them? All right, here. Here's a front view of the man I'm looking for. Recognize him? Afraid not, sir. Afraid I can't help you. Ever hear the name Tom Chase? Chase? Not that I remember. Uh, this man in the newspaper picture, is his name Tom Chase? Well, uh, could be. I'm not sure. Well, if he's around the street somewhere, you'll probably run into him sooner or later. How do you figure? People on the street don't leave it much. Oh, world of its own, huh? I suppose. Sort of an upside-down world, but a world, I guess. Seems to be what they want. So you think if my friend Tom Chase is here on the street somewhere, he's liable to stay here? Most of them do. Then it looks like you're going to have a steady customer for a while. We can always use him. Why don't you go talk to Pops, the old boy playing the trumpet there? He's got quite a memory. Maybe he could help you. Thanks. I will. Pop was way off in Never Never Land. He looked as old as Africa. He wore dark glasses. And the horn he was blowing looked like he'd either found it or made it. <laughs> Real cool, Pops. Thank you, Daddy. Me and the boys were just warming up. That was a warm-up? Oh, it ain't what it used to be. We'll still hold up for a while, I guess. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah, you talk to that horn real pretty. <laughs> it went on talk back to Count's Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, maybe you can help me, Pops. You got troubles? In a way. I'm looking for somebody. Oh, lots of people got troubles, Daddy. No, that's not quite what I mean. It's a... Well, it's a fellow named Tom Chase. Ever hear the name around here? Chase? Yeah, there was a side man in Chicago once named Tom Chase. No. In the 20s it was. No, sorry, wrong, Chase. Uh, the one I'm looking for is under 40. Only Tom Chase I remember was the old one. You been around here much? One you looking for? Maybe. What kind of voice he got? Oh, I don't know. Why? I remember voices. If I heard his, maybe I'd remember it. Well, look, I can do better than that, Pops. I got a picture of him right here. That don't do me no good. Why not? I'm blind, Daddy. Basin Street, boys. I think I knew now why he could blow the kind of music he did. It had to make up for a lot of things. I guess it was the only way he could see. Item seven, two dollars, drinks for me. I sat there in Ace's castle for a couple of hours, waiting. Waiting for Tom Chase to show up, or for the guy who looked like him to show up, so I'd know for sure whether this was a wild goose chase. But nothing happened. A few people slowly drifted in and out. Mostly they huddled around Pops Harker, nursing their drinks and listening. It got to be midnight, and I just about decided to give up when a man with a face like a weasel slid into the chair across the table from me. Your name, Dollar? Johnny Dollar? That's right. Who are you? Freddie Quintana. So? So you should be glad to see me. Should I? Any particular reason, Quintana? Oh, the best. It's around the street that you're looking for somebody, Dollar. News travels first. Yeah, when it's really interesting news like that. What's so interesting about it? Whenever I smell dough, it is always interesting. Well, maybe your nose is too sensitive or too long. There was no mention of money. Look, I've been around, Dollar. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah, a lot of people who float around the street and the quarter don't want to be found. Oh? So a guy comes looking for somebody, it usually costs him a little money to find him. I see. And you're looking for a guy named Tom Chase. So? So, I think I've got him paid. Where is he? Oh, not so fast, darling. Not so fast. First we talk money, hmm? You're wrong there, Frank. What do you mean? First we make sure you know what you're talking about. Now, look now. You me. look. I've bumped into a lot of characters like you. 
And more than a fair share of them were just trying to ace into a deal for a fast buck without I any... I tell you, I tell you, I got the guy paid. Describe him. Yeah. Tall, good build, probably a good-looking guy when he shaves, curly hair, brown eyes. How am I doing? Not bad, but I take a lot of convincing. Look, you looking for this guy, you just want to talk about it. I just want proof. Okay? I'll get proof. Bring him here. That'll be proof enough. You kidding? Hmm. It ain't that easy, and you know it. This guy don't want to be found. I know that the minute I spot him. He's going under the name of Tom James. Tom James? Yeah. Ring a bell? Maybe. His full name is Thomas James Chase. He could be using the first two names as an alias. Sure. Yeah, that's a familiar pattern. Sure. Okay, Quintana, suppose you do give me some proof. What do you want? 500 bucks. Oh, that's a lot of money. I think you want Chase at all. Uh, I'd have to get an okay for my company. You could arrange it. Maybe, maybe. And that brings us back to the question of proof again. I'll be back in an hour, Dollar, with proof. Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, what is it, Bumps? The man you was talking to. He's a bad one. Oh. I can tell from his voice, Daddy. Yeah, I know what you mean. You don't want to mess around with a bad one like that. Unfortunately, he could have something I need. Is that the reason? Oh, well, maybe not a good one, but it's part of my job. Maybe you got yourself the wrong kind of job then, Daddy. You know, Pops. Sometimes I think you're right. Hi, Dollar. Hello, Freddy. Right back on time. Yeah, yeah, with the goods, too. Yeah. Take a look. It's all crumpled up. What is it? Well, smooth it out. I think it's a letter he started writing and threw it away. Where'd you get it? I paid a little visit to his room when he was out. I fished it out of the voice basket. Okay. Lola... When you get this, I'll be far away. Don't try to find me. It's better this way. I don't know how to explain, but ends there. Well, what you think? Is he your boy? I can tell you in about ten seconds. I fished the sample of Chase's handwriting out of my pocket and compared it to the half-finished letter. I'm no expert, but I didn't have to be. There was no doubt about it. It was Chase's handwriting. So it looked as though my trip was going to pay off after all. Tom Chase was right here in New Orleans. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. There's a little game of chance called Dealer's Choice. Fine. Until the dealer gets dealt out the hard way. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Brady Quintana, Dollar. Where you been, Quintana? You were supposed to contact me again later last night. Yeah, look, this is a complicated deal. It takes time.
time. What's complicated about it? I'm looking for a guy named Tom Chase. You claim he's here in New Orleans under the name Tom James. For 500 bucks, you'll tell me where he's hiding. Sure, sure, but the problem is he's hiding too good right now. I think you're stalling. You uh, saw that letter his last night, didn't you? Yeah, it's Chase's handwriting, all right. I'll find him again by tonight. You know that bar we met in? Ace's Castle. Be there at 10 o'clock tonight with the dough. Okay, but you'd better produce, Quintana. I don't have much time. If Chase finds out I'm trying to put the finger on him, neither will I. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut... Assignment, the Phantom Chase matter. Expense account continued. Item 8, 425. Long distance call to Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau in Hartford. Pat agreed that 500 was a small price to pay if it got us a man who'd embezzled 120,000 from a New York investment outfit. Item 9, 370. Phone call to George Everson, senior partner of the investment outfit in New York. It was Everson who'd spotted a newspaper picture of a New Orleans bar with a man in the background who looked to him like Chase. Everson had been afraid he was sending me on a wild goose chase, and he was happy to hear his wild goose had just laid a golden egg. <laughs> Item 10, $2. Assorted newspapers and magazines to kill time. Yeah, there was nothing I could do until I met Freddy Quintana at Ace's Castle at 10 p.m. Pops Harker, the trumpet player at Ace's Castle, had told me Freddy was a bad one. But right now, he was my only lead. The day dragged on. Finally, it got dark, and I was just starting to think about dinner. Hello, Johnny. Lola Chase. May I come in? Well, yeah, sure. Come on in. Well, what are you doing here, Lola? I, I thought you were in New York. George Everson told me about your phone call to him this morning. That you think Tom is here in New Orleans. Well, yeah. Everson said he hadn't told you about the newspaper picture before because he didn't want to get your hopes up. I know. He explained. I got a plane down here right away. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that was a good idea, Lola. I doubt very much if there's anything you can do. I thought if you do find Tom, if I could just talk to him, maybe I could get him to see that the only thing for him to do is give himself up and return the money. Oh, I wouldn't count on that. Johnny, I had to come. He's still my husband. Yeah. George Everson didn't go into details about the newspaper picture. Oh, there was an article on New Orleans Jazz, one of the New York papers a few days back. It, it showed a bar scene, a place called Ace's Castle. And in the background, sitting at the bar with his face turned away, was a man George thought might be your husband. So I came down here. Now you have proof he's here? I think so. What kind of proof? Johnny, please tell me. Okay. But I'm not sure you want to see it, Lola. Go ahead. Well, last night on Ace's Castle, a character named Freddie Quintana contacted me. Told me he thought he had Tom Peg, that he was going under the name of Tom James. James? That's his middle name. Yeah. It's the kind of alias a lot of people use. But that's not proof of anything. Oh, I know. Then Quintana showed me a letter he'd stolen from Tom's room. An unfinished letter. I checked it against the sample of Tom's writing I'd brought with me. It, uh, looks pretty genuine. What kind of letter? To you, Lola. Oh. Please. May I see it? Uh, here you are. Lola. When you get this, I'll be far away. Don't try to find me. It's better that way. I don't know how to explain, but... I'm sorry. That's Tom's writing, Johnny. Yeah. What happens now? Oh, I'm supposed to meet Freddie Quintana at Ace's Castle down on the quarter at 10 o'clock tonight. I want to come with oh, you. Oh, look, Please, Lola. Johnny. Expense account item 11, 820. Dinner for Lola and me. 
She didn't say much during the meal. I, I guess there wasn't much for her to say. Afterward, we started walking through the quarter toward Ace's castle. It's interesting around here, Johnny. Oh, yeah. The quarter hasn't changed much. You've been here before? A couple of years ago. Funny. What is? You, in a job like this. Why? You, well, I don't know. You just don't look like a person who spends most of his time looking for fugitives and criminals. It seems like such a strange job for you. Oh, uh, it's a job. Do you like it? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I like it a lot. Sometimes I don't like it at all. Like now? Like now. Thanks, Johnny. For what? For feeling that way. Well, I guess it's my turn to say funny. What about? You're asking about... Well, Pops Harker seemed to think I was in the wrong job, too. Who? Pops Harker. An old fellow who plays trumpet at Ace's Castle. You'll hear him. He's blind. Oh. Yeah, and that horn of his has to make up for a lot. But why did he think you're in the wrong job? Uh, mostly because of the company I sometimes have to keep, like Freddie Quintana. Oh. I hate to see things work out like this. What's that mean? I mean, finding Tom this way through a cheap information peddler like this Quintana. Oh, if he'd only turn himself in. I'm afraid that's a pretty remote possibility. I know. He seems to have forgotten what sort of a person he was. After his arrest, he wouldn't even talk to me about it. I guess he's forgotten a lot of other things, too. All right, come on, Lola. That's Ace's castle right ahead. You think Tom will be there? I doubt it. Probably just Quintana. But he's supposed to tell me where your husband is hiding. Here we are. That must be Pops Harker over there in the band with the dark glasses. Yeah, that's him. Come on, that corner table. This is the place in the newspaper picture? Yeah. Yes. I can believe Tom's been here. He loved this kind of music. Real nice, Pops. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Johnny, I thought you said he yes. was... Yes, he recognized my voice. You still messing around with that mean one, Daddy? Freddy Quintana? Afraid I have to, Pops. I'm not enjoying it particularly. Well, you stick to the good ones, Daddy. Don't mess with the bad ones. Gossiping about me, Pops? Oh, Quintana. Oh, why don't you keep your face in that horn and out of other people's business? Take it easy, Quintana. That's all right, Mr. Dollar. I'll still be blown away this year, horn long after some folks could breathe. Yeah, 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 sure. Who's the dame, Dollar? Don't worry about it, Freddy. Let's just say she's with me. Okay, okay. Don't be so touchy. Okay to talk? Go ahead. It's all set. Oh. oh, yeah. I got this chase on ice for you. He thinks I'm arranging passage for him on a boat out of here with no questions asked. That's cruel. Easy, Lola. Ah, business is business. Where is he now? Now, let's not get noses, sweetie. Cut the smart talk, Freddy. My, my, you are in a pretty nasty mood tonight, darling. Yeah, so just stick to business, huh? Okay, okay, here. Now, this is the address of my rooming house. Chase gonna meet me in my room at midnight. You be there in a few minutes before. And, Dollar, be sure you bring a doe. You be sure you bring Chase. He's in the bag. See you at midnight. Oh, what a horrible person. Yeah, he's sure not the best. Johnny, let me go with you at midnight. I don't think that'd be a very good idea, Lola. Please. Why? Just say I'm pretty foolish, I guess. I, I just want to see him once more. Look, why don't I, you... I know it won't do any good, but after you take him, I probably won't see him again. He wouldn't see me before. He probably won't afterwards, but just to see him once more. Lola, I don't know what good I'd like gonna... to go back to my hotel and rest now, but... Please pick me up before you go to Quintana's room. Johnny. Okay, Lola. Quarter of twelve. This is the address, Lola. Quintana's rooming house. Mm, it's an awfully shabby place. The perfect spot for Quintana. What time is it? 
Five minutes to twelve. All right, let's go in. Number eight. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay, we won't knock. There's nobody here, Johnny. Well, we're a little early. Okay, we'll wait. So we waited. Fifteen minutes went by. Half an hour. Do you think he was just playing some sort of fiendish joke on us, Johnny? I've been stood up on deals like this before. But Lola wasn't used to it. Pretty soon the strain got a little too much for her. Please, Johnny, I, I can't stand this anymore. Take me back to my hotel. So I did. Now I was right back where I started from, with no leads. I decided to go back to Ace's Castle. That's where the trail had started. I sat there for a few minutes, nursing a drink. Then somebody slid into the chair across from me. You Janet Dollar? Yeah, that's right. Who are you? Lieutenant Lefebvre, New Orleans, please. Ah. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? How long you been here, sir? A few minutes. Oh? Weren't you in here early? Yeah. What time you leave? A little after ten. Why? Where'd you go? To see somebody who didn't show up. Look, Lieutenant, what's this all about? You don't mind just answer the questions, huh? Who was this, uh, somebody you went to see? A character named Quintana. I was supposed to meet him in his room. Well, you won't see him back. Well, well, that's a sort of a long story. Look, here's my card, Lieutenant. Mm. Jones investigator, huh? You might come with me, Mr. Dollar. Oh, where to? Out back. There was a woman with you earlier, huh? Yes, Mrs. Lola Chase. I took her back to a hotel before I came back here again. I see. End of the alley here. What's this all about, Lieutenant? Go ahead, Dollar. Take a look. There were two policemen and a photographer in the alley, over near a doorway. I moved in close. A man was sprawled there, face up. Freddie Quintana. And he didn't look mean or nasty anymore. Just real tired. Real dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Somehow, I managed to parlay a scrap of burnt paper into a plane ticket for what almost turns out to be a one-way trip. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Lieutenant Lefebvre, New Orleans Police. Good morning, Lieutenant. Anything new on the Freddy Quintana murder? Yes. Oh? You. What? You said you were with Quintana last night. On business, Lieutenant. What kind of business, Dollar? Well, it's a long story. I'm sure. I think you better tell it to me. Okay, I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, 
tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 12, $1.20, cab fare from my hotel to police headquarters where Detective Lieutenant Lefebvre was waiting for me. All right, Dollar, now what's it all about? Lieutenant, it's mainly about Tom Chase, <laughs> alias Tom James. Chase? James? Who, who's he? Former junior partner in the investment firm of Everson & Chase in New York City. Chase embezzled $120,000 from the firm. It's not very easy to do. I know, but he was real smart about it. George Everson, the senior partner, explained how Chase had done it. You see, he specialized in long-term investments. Oh, people would buy and hold on, huh? Yeah, that's right. Chase juggled the accounts, and over what must have been a period of many months, he siphoned off a total of $120,000. Mm-hmm. How'd Everson find out about it? Oh, one of their clients suddenly decided to sell out. His count wasn't as fat as it should have been, huh? That's right. Everson immediately ordered an audit. The total shortage was discovered and the DA's office moved in. Did uh, Chase make any kind of statement? No, no, none at all. He just clammed up. Everson tried to get him to explain, and so did Chase's wife, Lola. But he wouldn't say anything. Everson raised bail for him, and Chase promptly jumped bail and disappeared. Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard stories like this before, Doc. Yeah, sure. Open and shut embezzlement. Anybody find a motive? Well, we're just guessing at that. Could be any one of the standard ones, I guess. Uh, gambling debts, maybe? Oh, I don't know. As far as we can determine, Chase didn't do any gambling. Of course, you never really know. Huh? What about a woman? Well, now, that's probably closer to it. Although I'm like George Everson. If it was a woman, I don't get it. Why not? You should see Chase's wife, Lola. Oh, like that, eh? Like that. Still, the woods are full of men who've run out on good wives. Oh, yeah. There was something wrong in the happy home, all right, but I guess it was all on Chase's part. Was he? Lola told me he'd been moody and tense for some time before the embezzlement became known. He was away from home a lot at night. Told her he'd been working late. Mm -hmm. That, too, sounds familiar. She asked George Everson about it, and George told her it wasn't so. Then there was the matter of the vacation... Vacation? Yeah, at the last moment, Tom Chase told Lola he couldn't get away, but insisted she go anyway. So she went to Martha's Vineyard alone. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly has all the earmarks of another woman. I know. I asked George Everson if he knew of any other woman. He said no. I haven't had the heart to ask Lola Chase that yet. But I got a hunch that's what she's afraid of this, too. Well, it's all very interesting, Dollar, but what's he got to do with Freddie Quintana's murder here in New Orleans? Yeah. Here's a New York newspaper. Last week. Take a look at it. Uh, article on New Orleans jazz. Yeah. That's a picture of Ace's Castle down on the quarter. George Everson spotted this picture. The fellow in the background sitting at the bar looked to him like Tom Chase. And Chase was crazy about jazz. And that's why you come down here to New Orleans? Yep. Freddie Quintana contacted me night before last and told me Tom Chase was in New Orleans under the name of Tom James. Did you have any proof to show you? A letter Chase had started to Lola, then threw away. Quintana stole it from Chase's room. The handwriting genuine? Mm-hmm. I checked it against a sample of Chase's writing that I'd brought with me. Yeah, it's his, all right. Go on. Well, Quintana told me to meet him in his room at midnight. He'd have Chase there. Apparently, he was pretending to negotiate with Chase for passage out of the country. Oh? No. So Lola and I went to Quintana's room at midnight. But he didn't show. And I took her back to a hotel. Then I met you. And you showed me Freddy Quintana's body in the alley. It sure looks like Tom Chase didn't want to get found. Mm -hmm. So now if we get Tom Chase, we got Freddy Quintana's killer. That's about the size of it, Lieutenant. I don't know. What do you mean? Dollar, quarter's been my beat for a long time now. So? So Freddy Quintana was a real bad boy. That's what I've been told. When a bad boy gets himself killed, it isn't always easy to tag the man who did it. Meaning there are a lot of them who'd like to have done it, huh? In Freddy's case, a long line of them. I don't doubt it. Well, we give it a whirl. Tom Chase, alias Tom James. 
I get out bulleting on him. If he's the one, though, he probably skipped town by now. Could be. What's your next move, Jenny? One that I don't look forward to, believe me. Oh? Breaking the news to Lola Chase. I just won't believe it, Johnny. I know. It was hard enough to think that Tom was an embezzler, but he isn't a killer, Johnny. He couldn't be. A nice guy can get twisted up. Then, when he's on the run, he sometimes acts like an animal. He'll destroy anything or anyone who's between him and his freedom. But what kind of freedom can a man have who's... I guess you were right, Johnny. Yeah, what about? You said I shouldn't have come down here from New York. That there was nothing I could do except get hurt more. Oh, I can understand your feeling. You had to come, but, well... Johnny, I wish you were working for me right now. This investigation, I mean, I'd just call it off. Pray it isn't that simple. Your husband's still a fugitive. He's got to be found. That $120,000 or what's left of it has to be recovered. And if he is responsible for Quintana's murder... I know. It was just a wish. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment. It's for you, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Lefebvre. Thought I might find you there. Anything new, Lieutenant? Yes. That Tom James alias you gave us for Tom Chase paid off. Oh? We just located his room. Where? In a room and house in the quarter, a couple of doors from where Freddie Quintana lived. I'll meet you there in ten minutes. <laughs> Expense account item 13, three dollars. Cab fare from Lola's hotel to the rooming house in the quarter. Two dollars for the fare, a dollar extra for speed. The driver earned it. Eight minutes later, I met Lieutenant Lefebvre at the rooming house, a dilapidated two-story building. He took me to a room at the end of the hall on the first floor. There's it, Jim. No sign of Chase, huh? No. We're keeping a stakeout on the room just in case, but I doubt if he'd be back. His clothes are gone. Looks like he left in a hurry, Lefebvre. Yeah. Take a look over here. Well, some charred pieces of paper. We'd fish them out of the wastebasket. That's a mistake amateurs usually make, burning stuff in a wastebasket. No draft. That's right. Some of it's not completely burned. See if any of it makes sense to you. Well, this one looks like part of a letter. This one... Yeah. Yeah, this one plagues Chase all right. Looks like a little piece of a envelope. Mm Mm-hmm. Could be he brought part of the money down here in it. You see, you can still read part of the letterhead in the upper corner. Everson and... The full name is Everson and Chase. That's the name of the firm. Chase was the junior partner. Yeah. Well, that makes it pretty clear that Tom James and Tom Chase are one and the same. Did he rent the room under the name of Tom James? That's right. Haven't got any of the details yet. There's no manager here. Vacancies are handled by a rental agent down the street. I see. Here's another charred fragment I can't figure out. Here, take a look. It's right in here. And just some numbers. Looks like a... Twelve and a twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Mean anything to you? Twelve, twenty-three. Oh, an address, maybe? Possibly. But that's not much help. What address? Oh, well, if I get any bright ideas, I'll call you. I'm going to pay a visit to that rental agent. For you? Are you the agent for that rooming house down the street? That's right, sir. Collis. Is the name Roger Collis? You'd like a room, maybe? No, thanks. I want some information. What about? Well, you rented a room some time ago to a man named Tom James, I believe. Well, let me see. I'll have to look it up. We keep all the rentals in this here book. And he'd offer... Yeah. Here it is. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, oh, yeah? Was there something special about that rattle? Oh, indeed there was, my friend. A little over a week ago it was. Yeah, that would figure. And the month's rent was paid in advance. Is that what was so special about it? Oh, no, no, that's happened before. It was who rented it was so special. Well, I thought Tom James... It was rented for Mr. James. By a friend of his. Oh? Now, I sure wish I had a friend like that. Oh, man, what a woman. The motive for Tom Chase's embezzlement. 
It was a woman after all. He probably stayed undercover while she rented the room for him. I thought of his wife, Lola. I didn't want to see her get hurt anymore. Expense account item 14, cab fare to Lola's hotel. Is there something new, Johnny? You left in such a hurry. Lola, do yourself and me a favor. What is it? Go back to New York now. Why? Well, I just think it'll be better all around, that's all. Something's happened. You found out something. Johnny, please don't hold anything back from Look, me. Look, Lola, Whatever I... it is, I have a right to know. Yeah, I guess you do. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you this, but... It looks like Tom isn't traveling alone. Oh. I guess I always knew that was it. It had to be. I'm sorry. You're right, Johnny. The only thing for me to do now is go back to New York and forget. Try to forget. Thanks for everything, Johnny. Item 15, $3 even, drinks for me. But they didn't take the bad taste out of my mouth. Lola, heading back to New York alone, and Chase, heading who knew where with 120 grand and not alone. I thought of that scrap of charred paper with the numbers on it, the one we'd found in this room. Twelve, twenty-three. They could mean anything or nothing. Finally, I gave up trying to make sense out of it and picked up the evening paper. News section, not much of interest. Sports, the comics, the weather, harbor news, the... Harbor news. Ship arrivals and departures. Twelve, twenty-three. Could that be the time of departure of a ship and the pier number? From Pier 23 at 12, maybe? Sure, it sounded like a long shot. But I had a strong hunch the trail might not be as cold as I'd thought. Here's our star to tell you about the next intriguing episode of this story. It's about a trail that heats up and a girl who doesn't exactly help to cool things off. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Lefebvre, New Orleans Police, Johnny. How's that when you call? Lieutenant, I think I've got a new lead on the whereabouts of Tom Chase. I could use a new lead. Let me have it. That room he leased under the name of Tom James. Remember that charred paper we found in the wastebasket? Sure. Stuff he tried to burn after he took off in a hurry the night of Freddie Quintana's murder. We could make out two numbers written on one scrap of paper. Twelve and twenty-three. I haven't been able to figure out what they mean, though. No. Neither had I, until I happened to look at the harbor news in the newspaper. Uh, yeah. You think those numbers could refer to a ship sailing? Pier 23 at 12 o'clock, maybe? Could be, Johnny. Sure could be. 
I'll go to work on it. Maybe I have something by the time you get here. Lieutenant, I'll be there in ten minutes. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yes, truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. Item 16, a dollar fifty cab from my hotel to police headquarters in the office of Detective Lieutenant Lefebvre. I got some of my boys working on ship sailings, Johnny. Trouble is, we're not sure what date we want and whether the 12 means noon or midnight. Pier 23 is a pretty busy place. There's been several departures in the last few days. Freddie Quintana was killed three nights ago, about 10.30 at night. Could be the departure time was midnight that same night. Could be, and that's the line we're taking. But, of course, that's assuming that Tom Chase, alias Tom James, was the one who murdered Freddie Quintana. Oh, everything points that way, Lieutenant. Look, Tom Chase was the junior partner in the New York investment firm of Everson and Chase. He embezzled 120000 bucks, jumped his bail, and disappeared. Uh, embezzler isn't necessarily a killer, Johnny. Matter of fact, the two types are usually quite different. True enough. But the big kicker in this deal is why Tom Chase went sour in the first place. A man who changed as completely as he did in one direction might go all the way. Uh, it's happened before, of course. His wife Lola and his senior partner, George Everson, were pretty shocked at the thought Tom had embezzled the money. They couldn't understand why a man like he was would do what he did. Neither could I, until I found out it was a woman who rented a room for him here in New Orleans. Mm. How did Miss Chase take that news? Oh, pretty hard. She's still here in New Orleans? No, I talked her into returning to New York. I just didn't want to see her get hurt anymore. Well, she probably shouldn't have come down here in the first place. Well, that's what I told her. That there was nothing she could do here. But what it boiled down to was she just wanted one more look at her husband. You see, after he was arrested in New York, he refused to make a statement. Wouldn't even talk to her about it. Refused to see her at all. So she thought if she could see him again, he might have some kind of explanation. Huh? Yeah. But as it turned out, she was just asking for another kick in the face. How can a man explain another woman? <laughs> That's a good question. Personally, I hope I never have to answer one like it. Lefebvre, when I see what happens sometimes in the marriages I run up against, I'm glad I'm single. The trouble is, you and I have tangled with the wrong kind of people most of the time. You can say that again. Freddie Quintana sure fit into that category. That name brings up problems, Johnny. We're basing our belief that Chase skipped town and that those numbers on the scrap of paper mean a ship sailing. We're basing all that on the assumption that Chase killed Quintana. Right. You must remember that Quintana was a bad boy. There are plenty of people who'd like nothing better than to knock him off. But why at that particular moment... Oh, Lieutenant, the timing adds up to Chase. After I traced him here to New Orleans, Quintana contacted me, said he could deliver Chase for a price. He showed me a sample of Chase's handwriting he'd swiped from his room. It was genuine, all right. Then Quintana winds up dead in an alley before he can deliver Chase. How else can it add up? Look, Johnny, I'm just mentioning possibilities. You're right. Chase is the probability. Yeah. The fair... What? Well, let me get that down, all right, I have it. Thanks. They locate the ship? Yeah. Caribbean Star. Left at midnight the night of Quintana's murder. From Pier 23? Right. Destination Trinidad by way of Havana and Haiti. And there is a Tom James on that passenger list. Your hunch was a good one. Let's see. If I could get a plane out of here this morning, I might be able to intercept the ship at Haiti. Hey, could you cable the authorities there and request them to hold chase if I don't make it in time? Sure, glad to. There. Just a minute. Johnny? You expecting a call from New York? Oh, yeah. I put one into George Everson, Chase's senior partner, a little while ago. Well, here it is. Good, thanks. Hello? This is George Everson in New York. They told me at your hotel that you were at police headquarters. You were wondering why Chase embezzled the money from your firm, Mr. Everson. I still can't understand it. Mr. Dollar, it just... Well, maybe this will help. We found out that his hideout here in New Orleans was arranged for him by a woman. A woman? Oh, no. And according to the rental agent, quite a woman. Oh, 
Lola know of this? Yes. I talked her into returning to New York. Good. She should never have gone down in the first place. Uh, any leads on Chase's present whereabouts? Yeah, just turn one up. It looks like he's traveling under the name of Tom James on a ship to Trinidad. Trinidad? Right. But if my luck holds, he won't get farther than Haiti. Expense account item 17, $134.40. Transportation from New Orleans to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. The flight only took a few hours, but to me the plane seemed as slow as a truck. But then as we came in over the harbor at Port-au-Prince, I could see it was going to be a dead heat. The boat was just entering the harbor. By the time I got to the dock, they were just putting the gangway over. Nobody had come ashore yet. I had Chase's stateroom number from the passenger list. Okay. Empty. Real empty. Oh, well. What's the trouble here? What's wrong? Oh, presser. Was that you just broke in the door? Yeah, here's my card. But insurance investigator. But really, Mr. Dollar, the door... Don't worry, my... don't worry. I'll take care of it. Right now, I'm more interested in the man who used to be behind the door. What? He was going under the name of Tom Jane. Oh, yes, Mr. Jane. Well, where is he? I'm afraid I wouldn't know, Mr. Now, look, Dollar. this is no time for games, Percy. But I don't know where he is. I came aboard just as the gangway went down. Nobody could have come ashore. Do you mean here at Port-au-Prince? Wh- Wait a minute. Are you trying to say he got off at some other port? Our first stop. Havana? That'd be two days ago. That's right, Mr. Dollar. Oh, well, that's just great. I bust my neck to meet the boat for nothing. Look, so he got off in Havana. You have any idea where he was heading? None whatsoever. Well, that just about does it. He did ask me where the airline's office in Havana was. Airline's but... office. Thanks. <laughs> Expense account item 18, $8.40. Long distance call to the Havana Police Department. They put me through to a Lieutenant Escobar. Si, Senor Dollar. Hey, look, Lieutenant Escobar. I'm an insurance investigator from the United States. The United States? But the operator said you are in Haiti. Well, yeah, that's right. You see, well, let that go for a moment. I'm after a fugitive, an embezzler named Tom Chase, also known as Tom James. Chase? James? Yes. I wonder if you'd check the airlines at Havana and see where he bought a ticket to, then call me collect. I thought he was going to Trinidad, so I came as far as Haiti, where I found out here he got off in Havana. Trinidad? Haiti, Havana? Senor, if you will permit me, you sound a little confused. If I do, senor, it's because I am. There was nothing I could do after that except sit in Port-au-Prince and twiddle my thumbs. I wasn't at all sure I'd be hearing from Lieutenant Escobar again, or if I did, whether he'd have a lead for me. But two hours later, he called back, and he did. About your friend, Senor James, or Senor Chase, I'm not sure which. Let's not start that routine again, Lieutenant. James will do. see... Two days ago, the Senor James bought a plane ticket here in Havana. Where to? Barbados. Barbados? See, si, the British West Indies. Yeah, I know where it is. Oh, brother, he really gets around. Now, let me see if I have this thing straight, Senor. You thought he was going to Trinidad, so you went to Haiti. Well... But instead he came to Havana, so he went to Barbados. Well, you see... No, Senor, I am sorry, but it still does not make sense. Don't worry about it, Lieutenant Escobar. It does to me. Just accept my thanks for the lead. Someday I'll sit down and write you a letter about it. Item 19, $143, transportation and incidentals from Haiti to Barbados. From the air, it looked like a beautiful spot. Pastel-colored houses with pink roofs, clean, sandy beaches, gentle waves. Yeah, I could see Chase's point in coming here. A good place to get away from it all, particularly with $120,000 to keep your company. And more particularly, when what you're trying to get away from is a couple of assorted charges, like embezzlement and murder. But if I thought that finding Tom Chase, alias Tom James, would be a cinch once I got to Barbados, I was sadly mistaken. It was a bigger island than I'd realized, about 170 square miles. And Bridgetown was quite a fair-sized city. I checked into the hotel, then made the rounds of all the others, inquiring about Chase. But I got nowhere. Item 20, one dollar, two drinks, while I brooded in the hotel bar over the fact the trail had gotten cold again. But by the time I got that through my head, I saw the prettiest sight I'd encountered all day. A girl. And unless I was very much mistaken, she was heading for my table. You're Johnny Dollar? Sure am. I'd like to talk to you. Sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? Please. You're looking for somebody, aren't you, Mr. Dollar? Am I? Anybody in particular? 
Yes. Let's call him Tom James. Oh? What about him? I know where he is. Who are you? Connie. Connie who? Connie's enough. So you're the one, huh? What do you mean? Well, I knew Chase wasn't traveling alone. Yeah, I'm the one. One thing I don't get. What? Why you're doing this, if you're Chase's girlfriend. You want out, maybe? Yeah, I want out. So you'll deliver Chase to me. What do you want for it? Money enough to get back to the States? That might be arranged. Just one thing. What is it? The last person who tried to turn Chase over to me got himself killed back in New Orleans. You better be real careful. I will. Now, look. There's a bar down near the waterfront called the Trade Winds. Know it? I can find it. Be there about ten tonight. Chase will be with me. Okay. Two things, Mr. Dollar. What are they? Don't let on to him how you found him. Okay, what else? Bring the money. Connie left and I sat there basking in the welcome warmth of a trail that had suddenly heated up again. At quarter to ten, I went down to the waterfront. I spotted the trade winds bar down the street a block or so. I waited. Pretty soon, I saw Connie go inside. I started for the entrance. Then, suddenly, I realized I was being followed. Somebody crossed the street in the shadows. I whirled and headed for him fast. It took him by surprise. He ducked down an alley, then into a warehouse on a pier. I eased up to the door. It was dark inside. But I went in. Then, too late, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted somebody beside me in the dark. Something hard hit me over the right ear. Knocked me to my knees. Yeah, I'd finally caught up with Chase. The hard way... Here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Next, a small fishing boat, a deserted island, and a man waiting there for me. A man with a gun. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Michael Ann Barrett, Lawrence Dobkin, Forrest Lewis, Peter Leeds, Barney Phillips, Tony Barrett, and Victor Perrin. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night for another exciting episode of this story on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Connie, Mr. Dollar. Well, you're about the last person in the world I thought I'd be hearing from. What do you mean? I waited for you last night at the Trade Winds Bar, but you didn't show up. No, I got delayed on the way by a hit over the head in a warehouse on a pier. What? No, don't tell me that surprises you. Of course it does. Look, that whole routine of yours yesterday about telling me where Tom Chase is hiding was just a decoy so he could get me down there and try to finish me off. If that night watchman hadn't come along when he did, I'd still... I don't know what you're talking about. Want to prove that? Yes, but how? By opening up and telling me what this is all about. Where are you now? Downstairs in the lobby. I'll be right down. (laughs) 
Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Barbados, British West Indies, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. Item 21, two cents. Exactly what I'd have taken at that point to chuck the whole deal. Getting slugged on the head the night before was bad enough. But when I got down to the lobby that morning and found that Connie was nowhere in sight... I realized I was right back where I started from, which was nowhere. I went over to the desk. Yes, sir? Hey, look, a girl just phoned me from the lobby. Did you see her? Yes, sir. The most attractive young lady. Yeah, and, and right now a most invisible young lady. Where'd she go? Why, I don't know, sir. Was she alone? Oh, was quite alone. She came in and asked to be put through to your room. And after she'd hung up, she suddenly turned and walked out. Oh, well, that's just great. You wouldn't happen to know her. <laughs> I'm afraid that's a pleasure that's been denied me, sir. Ever seen her before? Yes, once or twice around town. Was she with someone when you saw her? No, sir, a woman with such uh, obvious charm is seldom alone. Yeah, well, uh, you remember what the man she was with looked like? Well, only in a vague sort of way, I'm afraid. He was uh, large, rather handsome, athletic looking, I'd say. Could be Chase, all right. Chase? Uh, skip it. Well, that's that, I guess. Sorry I didn't make connections, sir. But perhaps you'll come back. I'm not counting on it. <laughs> A long time ago, I learned that in my job, it's always a good idea to keep in contact with the local authorities. So I decided to visit the colonial police. As of the moment, I needed a shoulder to do a little crying on. The shoulder in this case turned out to belong to an Inspector Whitsett. Well, let me see if I have this thing straight, Mr. Dollar. <clears throat> this chap you're looking for, Tom Chase, embezzled some money from the New York investment firm in which he was a junior partner. Yeah, that's right, Inspector. Everson and Chase was the firm. $120,000 was the amount. A hundred... My goodness, Chase must be rather clever, Swindler. Yeah, and pretty speedy, too. He's kept two jumps ahead of me all the way. And you think he's traveling under the name of Tom James? I'm sure of it. In New Orleans, a man named Freddy Quintana told me Chase and James are one and the same and showed me some handwriting to prove it. But uh, Chase eluded you in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Quintana was going to turn him over to me for a price, but then he turned up dead in an alley. So your friend Chase is dangerous as well as clever. Why? You do have your problems, don't you? A bucket full of them, Inspector. Mm. And now you think that this Chase or James is hiding here in Barbados? Well, I'm pretty sure of it. You see, he left New Orleans in a hurry after Quintana's murder. Understandably. But he burned some papers, not completely, and we found one with some numbers on it. They turned out to be about a ship sailing. I intercepted the ship at Haiti, but learned that Chase had gotten off in Havana. I see. The Havana police found out for me that he'd bought a plane ticket here to Barbados. And so here you are. Well, I must say, you're persistent. Oh, yeah. But so far, it's got me one big nothing. I thought my luck had changed when I met Connie last night, but apparently that was just a decoy. Connie? Yeah, here. Here, I've written down a description of her. I'd sure appreciate it if you could help me find her. Yeah. Oh, I say, from this description, it sounds as though it would be a pleasure to find her, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, Inspector. She's quite a dish. <laughs> well, how does this Connie enter into the situation? Well, pretty basically... You see, nobody up in New York could figure out why Chase had turned sour. His senior partner, George Everson, was mystified, and so was Chase's wife, Lola. But I guess the reason was pretty obvious right from the start, except nobody wanted to face up to it. Uh, I take it you refer to perhaps the uh, classic reason, uh, another woman. Right. I found out that Chase's New Orleans hideout had been arranged for him by a woman. Then last night, Connie told me she knew where Chase was, and for enough money to get back to the state, she'd tell me. Well, then this Connie would appear to be the other woman, huh? Yeah. She said she wanted out, but it turned out to be a trap. Oh? How so? Well, she set up a meeting for us last night, but on the way to it, I got slugged. Oh? Apparently, a night watchman came along right afterwards. Otherwise, I suppose Chase would have finished me off. One thing I don't get, though. What's that? Well, why would Connie call me from the hotel lobby this morning, then duck out before I could get downstairs? Was she alone when she left? According to the clerk, Yes. Oh, I, I know what you're thinking, Inspector. Could be she still wanted to go through with the deal, but spotted Chase closing in, so she ducked out. Yeah, something like that. 
Well, Mr. Dollar, it would appear you're stymied unless you can find Connie again. Stymied? Inspector, I'm scuttled. Good afternoon, Mr. Dollar. Clerk, has that girl been back? The one you called Connie? Yeah. No, sir. I've been keeping an eye out for her here in the lobby, but I've seen no sign of her. No calls or messages for me, huh? No, sir. If I see her, of course, I'll get in touch with you immediately. Uh, you'll be in your room? No, no, I'll, uh, I'll be at the Trade Winds Bar. The Trade Winds? Well, that's one of the waterfront bars, isn't it, Mr. Dollar? That's right. It was none of my business, sir, but I would be just a bit careful if I were you. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, that part of town, sir, it's not the best. Oh, you're telling me. I got hit over the head down in that part of town last night. And now you're going back there? Real glutton for punishment, huh? My thought was that the Trade Winds Bar was as good a place to go as any at the moment. Connie had wanted me to meet her there last night. If she really was on the up and up, she might try to contact me there again. The Trade Winds was a typical waterfront dive. Through the swirling smoke, I could make out sailors, fishermen, West Indians, and tourists all rubbing elbows. Item 22, 50 cents, two rum punches. They came cheap there. Halfway through the second one, I spotted someone in the doorway, Connie. But then she saw me and ducked out fast. So she didn't want to contact me, but I sure wanted to contact her. I went out the side door. My hunch was right. She was trying the alley. I stepped in front of her. Let go of me. Oh, no, baby. Just stay put. Stay Please. Put. I don't know what this is all about. Honest, Mr. Now, Dollar. Now, look. This is no time to start playing coy. Where's Chase? I don't know. Come on. Come on. Please, you must believe me. I should never have come to you in the first place. I'm not Chase's girlfriend like you think. Oh, try again, sister. Really, I'm telling the truth, Mr. Dollar. I know I posed to you as his girl, but I'm really not. Look. I was trying to work something for myself. When you started talking about murder, I realized I was getting involved in things I shouldn't. What are you talking about? Honestly, I can explain everything to you, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Inside. That's just what you're going to do. Look, we'll take this table right here. Go on, sit down. All right now, Connie, let's have it. Mr. Dollar, I want you to know I'm pretty ashamed of myself for what I was trying to do. It was wrong. I should have realized it sooner. Less editorial and more news, huh? Well, I met Tom Chase, or Tom James as he calls himself, here in Barbados a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago? You mean in New York a long time ago, don't you, Connie? No, Mr. Dollar. I wasn't Chase's girlfriend. I'd never seen him before two days ago right here. (sighs) Go on. I had a date with him. Then I found out you'd been asking around town for him. So I decided on a plan. So? I found you and told you I knew where Chase was. You thought I was his girl, and so I went along with it. I was supposed to have a date with him last night here at the Trade Winds, but he didn't come. He was too busy hitting me over the head at the time. You telling me the truth, Connie? I swear it. Then there's one big question. Why did you do it? Because I'm broke, Mr. Dollar. I'm stranded here in Barbados, and I want to go back to the States. I thought You were going to put the finger on him for enough dough to get back to the States, huh? I'm afraid that's about it. And you don't have any idea where he is now? None at all. Well, that's just fine. My last lead, out the window. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. You're sorry? Look, did he mention his girlfriend to you? He did say he was expecting a friend down here. They probably had it rigged for her to meet him here later. He didn't give you any indication where he was staying, huh? No. Or what his future plans were? No. There was one thing. Well, what was it? Well, I don't know if it means anything well, or not. Come on, let's have it. Well, we were here at the trade winds night before last. Afterwards, we walked around the waterfront for a while. Yeah? Tom stopped and talked to one of the fishermen there for quite a while. Ah. Could you hear what they were saying? No, they left me and went off to one side. Now, listen, Connie. Do you think you'd recognize that fisherman if you saw him again? Yes. I think so. Then come on. We went outside. It was sunset. A few fishermen were scattered along the wharves, mending nets, getting their gear in shape. We gave each one of them the once-over and kept going. Suddenly, Connie stopped. There he is, Johnny. The one who's yawning. Okay, thanks. You stay here. 
Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you don't sound very convinced. Oh, sure, it's a good evening. Soon it will be a good night, and then I can go to bed. Hey, uh, look, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Oh, sh- sure. Sure. Uh, mind staying awake a few minutes? But it's that I'm tired. Last night I work all night. Oh, fishing really must be good around here. It's not the fishing. It was the passenger. Passenger? Who? He don't give his name. Why'd you take him? Lagos Island. Where's that? Well, three hours by boat from here. What's there? Nothing. Nothing? A small abandoned pier, an old abandoned house. Nothing else. Nobody else. Uh-huh. You let him off there, huh? Yes. But he should be comfortable. I took much food with him. You mean he's there now, then? Sure. There are no boats there, and nobody could swim so far. I see. Okay, partner. Thanks a lot. Pleasant dreams. At this point, it looked real easy. And I began to wonder if it wasn't a little too easy. Chase sitting there on Lagos Island with no way to get off. All I had to do was hire myself a boat and go pick him up. I looked at the fisherman. He smiled at me politely. I looked back at Connie. She smiled too. Yeah, everything could be on the up and up. Or it could be a great big trap. But one thing was clear. I was going to have to go to Lagos Island to find out. Here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Getting to the island of Lagos? Easy. But getting away from it in one piece? That's a different story. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us for the next exciting episode of this story on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Lola Chase, Johnny. Lola, where are you? At a hotel over at Marisol Beach. Marisol Beach, you're here in Barbados? Yes. Look, when I left you in New Orleans, you promised to go back home to New York. I know, but I just couldn't stay there. Look, it's my husband you're after, Johnny. He's an embezzler, and according to you, he's even a murderer. But he's still my husband. There's anything I can do to help you. Lola, the best you can do is to stay away. I'm sorry, I just can't, Johnny. Please don't try to make me. (sighs) Lola, I'm coming over to see you. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.
From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Barbados, British West Indies, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 23, $1.20 American. Cab fare to Lola's Hotel at Mirasol Beach. She was waiting for me on the terrace. Please don't be mad at me, Johnny. Oh, I'm not mad, Lola. It's just that I hate to see you keep leading with your chin. It's the best way I know of to get kicked in the face. I know. After all Chase has done, you Johnny, still... I've discovered something about me. Yeah? What do you mean? It does hurt to get kicked in the face. It hurts plenty. But you know, after a while, you get over being hurt. Oh. When you found out it was a woman who arranged Tom's hideout in New Orleans, I thought... Well, it seemed like the end of the world for me. Up to that point, I kept trying to tell myself that the reason Tom had embezzled the money was because he was in trouble of some kind. And I could help him. But I guess down deep I knew, right from the start, it had to be another woman. And that's why I wanted you to go back to New York, Lola. I don't want to see you get hurt anymore. I know. But, Johnny... I don't think I can be hurt anymore. Yeah, well, I wouldn't count on it. I mean it. When I found out there was another... It ended a lot of things for me. And one of them was the way I used to feel about Tom. You're over it now? Well, not completely, of course, but... Things are different with me now. Then I still don't get why you came down here. I still want to help Tom if it's humanly possible, don't you see... Let's say I feel obligated to because of the way things used to be. Does that make sense, Johnny? Yeah, I I guess so. Well, I gotta be going now, Lola. It looks like your husband is holed up on an island about three hours from here. Is he all right? I wouldn't know. I haven't been close enough to find out. Except once. And that once got me a lump on the head. What do you mean? Oh, I ran into a girl named Connie. Thought she was Tom's friend. She offered to locate him for me. I guess he was following and caught up with me down at the waterfront. He attacked you? Yeah. Then it turned out the girl was only trying to promote herself a trip back to the States. She knew I was looking for Chase. She'd had a date or two with him, so she saw a chance to make some money. But how did you find out where Tom's hiding? The girl heard him talking to a fisherman. She pointed him out to me. He told me he'd taken Chase to Lagos Island. Now, if that fisherman's on the level, it looks like the case is just about wound up. And if he isn't? It could be another trap. But with luck, I should be back by dark with your husband. I'll be waiting, John. Expense account item 24, 950, long distance call to chase a senior partner, George Everson, in New York. I figured he ought to know that Lola was down here in Barbados. She was right here at home in New York. No, she just arrived this morning. Yes, but, but this is no good having her there. It, it just means more pain for her. She says she's over that part of it. You don't know, Lola. I don't think she'll ever be over Tom Chase. Mr. Dollar, I'm going to take the first plane to Barbados and bring Lola back to New York with me. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Mr. Everson. This time, maybe you can make her stay. Things could get a little rough around here, and I'd just as soon she was somewhere else. Rough? Johnny... You've located Chase? I think so. Well, look, uh, maybe if I came down right away, I could persuade him to give himself up. Afraid it's a little too late for that, Mr. Everson. It looks like Chase is holed up on a deserted island. I'm leaving in a few minutes to pick him up. He doesn't know you're coming? That's what I'm going to find out. See you when I get back. I hope. <laughs> Item 25, 30 bucks rental on a power cruiser. I wanted one I could handle alone and one with a radio. After I'd arranged for it, I told the owner to get it ready while I paid a visit to Inspector Whitsitt at Colonial Police Headquarters. Lagos Island, sir. That's where this chap Chase is hiding. Yeah, it looks like it. According to this chart I have, it's about three hours out. Yes, just about, I should think. How did you find out that Chase was there? Well, I finally located that girl, Connie, who'd pulled the disappearing act on me. Good. Not good. Turns out she isn't Chase's girl after all. Oh. At least I don't think she is. But she'd heard him talking to a fisherman. She pointed out the fisherman, and he told me he'd taken Chase to Lagos Island. 
I wonder, Mr. Dollar. Hmm? Well, doesn't the whole story sound just a wee bit pat to you? Yeah. And that's just what's worrying me. This whole deal could be a trap. Connie could still be Chase's girl. And that fisherman could be in on the deal, too. In which case, you could be in for a bit of trouble at Lagos Island. Well, there's one way to find out, Inspector. Well, let's hope it's not the wrong way. What do you know about Lagos? Well, it's uh, fairly flat, pretty heavy underbrush, a small cove with a rickety pier and uh, and an abandoned house on the other side of the island. Anyone living on the island? I mean, other than Chase? No, not that I know of. Oh, there used to be rather good sport fishing out there, but that died down a couple of years ago. Oh, I doubt that anyone's been near the place in quite a while. I see. Look, Inspector, I'd like you to do me a favor. Well, certainly. Well, I've got a radio on the boat I rented. My call letters are 6X3. Now, here's a description of the fisherman on this boat. I'd appreciate it if you could have one of your men keep an eye on him and radio to me if he puts out to sea after I do. Very well. Of course, even if he did put to sea, it wouldn't necessarily prove that he was working with Chase and was going after you. So he might just be going fishing. Oh, sure. Just one thing, though, Inspector. Hmm? I don't want to be the fish. I went down to the waterfront. My boat was all ready, so I went aboard and shoved off. One side of the harbor, I set my course for Lagos Island. The boat was equipped with a rig for lashing the wheel in position, sort of an automatic pilot. So I snapped it in place and started down into the cabin. And then I saw the cabin was occupied. Lola. Hello, John. Oh, great. For two cents, Lola. I knew you'd turn back and put me ashore, but please don't. I can't, but only because I can't afford to take the time. I'm glad. But if you think I like the idea of your stowing away, you're crazy. Do you mind telling me why you did it? For a very good reason. Well, let's have it. Tom obviously doesn't want to be found. I think he's made that clear enough. And you... Well, you're the kind who doesn't stop until you finish your job. So? So, that being the way things are... Johnny, somebody could get hurt. And I couldn't stand that. I thought that maybe if I came, there there wouldn't be any violence. Oh, look, Lola, Chase isn't going to get hurt if you'll just be sensible. I... I wasn't only thinking of Tom. I I wouldn't want you to get hurt either, Johnny. Oh? I've thought thought about you a lot. About how wonderful you've been to me. It's funny. What is? Oh, just that if things were different, maybe you and I... Maybe. But things never are different, Lola. I know. Are you sure that's the reason you came along? What do you mean? It wouldn't by any chance be because you want to help Tom Chase. Help him? I told you, Johnny, if there's anything I can do to help you, I want to. That's why I came down I mean, here. help him get away from me. Thanks for your very charming opinion of me. It's wonderful knowing that's the way you feel. Look, Lola, whatever my own private opinions and feelings are or might be, sometimes I have to file them away and concentrate on the way things look. When the time comes, Johnny, you'll see that that isn't the way it is at all. I hope so, because the time could be pretty soon. 6X3 from Barbados Control. 6X3 from Barbados Control. Over. This is 6X3. Go ahead. Uh, This is Inspector Witzer, Dollar. Oh, yes, Inspector. The fisherman in question left the harbor about 20 minutes after you did. He may be following you. Be careful. I'll try. Believe me. Thanks, Inspector. Over and out. What does that mean, Johnny? It means that this Lagos Island deal could be a trap. Oh, what are you going to do? Find out. What else? We kept going. A couple of hours later, we sat at the island. There was no sign of life, and I headed for the rickety pier. There was nobody in sight, so we went ashore. Inspector Whitsitt had said the house was on the other side of the island, so we started through the underbrush. It's awfully dense in here. Yeah, it sure is. How far is it across the island, Johnny? Oh, about a mile, I think. Oh. Is there anything over there? A deserted house. Although it's probably not deserted now. Easy through oh. here. This stuff is pretty rough for me. Look, if Tom won't give himself up, Will you let me talk to him? Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to take any chances with you, Lola. You mean you still think I might try to help him escape? I mean, he could be pretty dangerous right now. 
Oh, he'd never turn on me, Johnny. Don't count on it. I remember a guy named Freddie Quintana who tried to turn him in back in New Orleans. Freddie wound up dead. No, I still can't believe Tom had anything to do with that. He's not the type. He... Johnny! Get down. You were saying, Lola? Where did it come from? Who knows in this underbrush? Come on. Down in the gully. He's shooting wild. He mustn't be able to see us. What do we do? Work our way along the gully and keep as quiet as possible. Maybe we can spot him from the other end. Get him out. Johnny, your gun, your... You're not going to try to, to to shoot him. You think he's trying to shake hands with us? Oh, but... Be quiet, will you? Yeah, it's sticking in here. Can you see anything at all? No, nothing. Hold it a minute. That's me. Shh. Uh, not a sound. Now, look, you'd better stay right here, Lola. This is a fairly sheltered spot. You'll be safe. What are you going to do? Track him down. Johnny, how do you know it's Tom out I there? I don't, I don't. But whoever it is is sure not hanging the welcome man out for us. I'm funny that way, Lola. I don't like getting shot at. Now, you stay here. But Johnny, Do as I... I say. Ow! Still wild. That came from a different direction, it sounded yeah, like. Yeah, from behind us. Toward the beach. Well, he must have circled around us. Hey. What's the matter? The beach. Oh, brother, is this a sucker play? What do you mean? He's heading for our boat. Come on. He took off through the underbrush, heading for the beach. It was slow going. Lines kept grabbing our legs. The footing was bad. Then we finally came out into the opening. I saw my hunch was right. He'd started the boat and was pulling away. By the time we got to the pier, he was heading out to sea, out of range. He turned and looked back at us over his shoulder. Johnny, it's Tom. It is Tom. Here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Next, a friend of the rescue and an unfriendly phone call from a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us for the next exciting episode of this story on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar, boy genius. Oh, look, Johnny, don't blame yourself. We come here to Lagos Island to pick up Tom Chase. So what happens? He circles around behind us, grabs a boat, and takes off. But how could you help it? I should have figured what he was up to. He was all alone here on the island, no way to get off. So we obligingly show up in a boat. He pins us down in the underbrush with a few wild shots while he works his way around to the boat. Well, one thing i got to admit, Lola, your husband's no dummy. Please, Johnny, I... I'd just as soon not be reminded of Tom's cleverness. Embezzlement, murder, escape, if that's cleverness, I don't want any part of it. How if he'd only turn himself in? Oh, fat chance of that. Maybe if he goes back to Barbados, we can find him there and pursue him. You're overlooking him. one small detail, Lola. Huh? You and I are now in the same spot Tom Chase was. We're alone on this island, and there's no way off. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> From 
from Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Lagos Island, three hours by boat from Barbados in the British West Indies. To the Home Office, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase matter. Expense account continued. I was getting nowhere. I've been on the trail of Tom Chase ever since he'd embezzled $120,000 from his New York investment firm and jumped bail. First to New Orleans. There, a man named Freddie Quintana had offered to deliver Chase for a price. But Quintana had wound up dead in an alley. Obviously, Tom Chase didn't want to be delivered. I'd finally tracked him to Barbados and found a fisherman who told me he'd brought Chase here to Lagos Island. Chase's wife, Lola, had flown to Barbados and insisted on coming with me to the island, hoping she could convince her husband to turn himself in. But instead, Chase had maneuvered us away from the boat I'd rented and had taken off in it. And now, Lola and I were out in the middle of nowhere. But really nowhere. What are we going to do, Johnny? Now, that's a good question, Lola. Police Inspector Whitsett back in Barbados told me that nobody comes near Lagos Island anymore. Not even fishermen. We may be here quite a while. But we don't even have any food. Well, that abandoned house across the island where your husband was hiding could be this food in it that he brought. Would you do me a favor, Johnny? Now, what is it? I'd just as soon you didn't keep calling Tom my husband. He is, isn't he? Legally, yes. But when I found out he wasn't traveling alone, that it was a woman who arranged his hiding place in New Orleans, I guess I just quit thinking of him as my husband. Oh, how do you think of him now? As a confused animal on the run. He doesn't seem very confused to me. One thing I don't get, though. What's that? Well, that night in Barbados, before you arrived, when Chase slugged me over the head in that waterfront warehouse... Why didn't he finish me off then? He had a chance to take me off his trail for keeps. And today, here on the island, those shots of his were plenty wild. Johnny, I keep telling you, Tom is no killer. Law, why don't I you... I know, he's an embezzler running away from the law, but I can't believe he killed that man Quintana in New Orleans. Can't believe or won't believe. <sighs> won't believe, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm going to build a fire here on the beach. It's just possible a boat might pass near enough to the island to see it funny. Mm. The way things work out. Oh? The timing's always so bad. What do you mean? Oh, you and me here. Under other circumstances, I don't really think I'd mind being here with you at all, Johnny. I, uh, I think I'd better start building that fire. We collected a pile of driftwood and brush and touched a match to it. Then we went across the island to the house where Chase had been hiding out. It was a pretty rickety affair, but he left some food. After we'd eaten, we went back and built the fire higher. Then we waited. The hours dragged by, and I was sure Chase was getting farther and farther from me all the time. But there was nothing I could do about it. Finally, I guess I dozed off. Johnny. Mm. Mm -hmm. What is it? What? Look, coming around the point out there. Huh? A boat. Come on. Let's get out where they can see us. Not so fast, Laura. What's the matter? That could be the fisherman who brought Chase here. If he's working with Chase, maybe he's coming here to try and finish us off. Johnny, do you think... Oh, hey, wait. That's a police boat. Yeah, it's Inspector Whitson. Oh, thank heaven. Come on. Hi, Inspector. Yes, Inspector. Yes. Yeah, aside from getting shot at a couple of times. Oh. A bit of a go, eh? Pretty one-sided go. Oh, Inspector, you're the most beautiful sight we've seen all day. Oh, well, thanks, old man. Uh, when I couldn't raise you by radio, I decided to come and have a look-see. Where's Chase? Who knows? He pinned us down in the underbrush with a few shots while he circled around behind us and took off on the boat. I see. I wonder. What? About halfway here, I saw a boat in the distance. It was too far away for me to see who was in it. Which way was it heading? Back towards Barbados. Then let's get this boat cranked up, Inspector. Maybe we've got a chance after all. I imagine Barbados looks pretty good again to you, too. It certainly does, Inspector. Yeah, until you came along, it looked like we were going to turn out to be Lagos Island's oldest citizens. Here we are. Well, incidentally, Mr. Dollar, do you know a chap named George Everson? Yeah, sure. He's the senior partner of the firm Chase and Bezel the Money from in New York. He's an old friend, Inspector. Why? Well, he dropped in on me just before I shoved off. What? 
Said he'd wait for you at your hotel. George, here in Barbados? Well, I phoned him earlier, and he said he was going to catch the first plane he could and come down here. But why? Mainly to take you back to New York. Now, Johnny, we've been all over that. Yes, and I still think you ought to... Hey, hold it. What's the matter? That boat on the other side of the pier, tied up there. It's the boat we went to the island in. Yeah, sure. So Chase did come back to Barbados. Good. I'll have the airlines and steamships watched, and I'll get word to the fishing and charter boats. If Chase is there, I think we can keep him bottled up. Inspector Whitsett took off to cover all the bases, and I took Lola back to her hotel. When I got to mine, George Everson was waiting for me. I took him to my room. Any luck on Lagos Island, Mr. Dollar? Oh, yeah. All of it bad. Oh. You're sure it's really Chase you've been trailing? All the way. Freddy Quintana, New Orleans, stole a letter from him, one that he'd started to Lola. It matched the sample of Chase's writing you gave me in New York. And when he grabbed our boat on Logos Island, Lola got a look at him and recognized him. Uh, how's Lola holding up under all this? Oh, I don't know. She says she's all over being hurt, that when she found out there was another woman involved, it killed her feeling for Chase. I'm not so sure of that, Mr. Dollar. Neither am I. Lola was completely devoted to Tom. She was badly hurt by his embezzlement, and I think she's still being hurt. Well, in any case, I'd feel a lot better if she'd clear out. Well, as you know, I came down here to take her back, but on the way, I started thinking about it. Oh? As long as she is here, perhaps she could be a big help to us. How so? Well, I still think Tom Chase would listen to Lola, even if he wouldn't listen to anyone else. Nobody could change that much. I wouldn't count on that, Mr. Everson. Yeah, well, still, it's worth a try. Now, if it could only work out so that Lola could talk to Tom, or better yet, if Lola and I both could talk to him. Well, what would you say to him? I don't know what Lola would say, but for me, I'd put it to him that his only hope of straightening himself out is to turn himself in and turn over whatever the embezzled money is left. Oh, look. Well, I, I'd even go so far as to guarantee eventual restitution to our investors of whatever amount he's already spent. I don't need to take time. Well, that's pretty generous of you, Mr. Everson, but I'm afraid you're a little too late. Why? In the first place, Tom Chase obviously is not going to turn himself in. He's had plenty of chances to up to now, and he hasn't exactly jumped at them. But if and I, I tell think it... it's... Well, I think he's got a good reason for not turning himself in. It's better than an even chance he's the one who knocked off Freddie Quintana in New Orleans. The man who offered to turn Tom over to you for a price? That's the one. Oh, no, Mr. Everson. At this point, it looks like there's only one way for me to get Tom Chase, and that's to track him down and drag him in. <laughs> Expense account item twenty-seven, a dollar twenty American. Cab fare from my hotel to Colonial Police Headquarters. To check with Inspector Whitsett, who, fortunately for me, he was being most cooperative. Chase hasn't contacted any of the airlines or steamship lines. We're in touch with the charter and fishing boat. He hasn't approached any of them, so far as we know. In other words, the chances are good that he's still here in Barbados. That's right. The question is, where? Right again. Take a look at this map, and you'll see our problem. 170 square miles, more or less. Yeah. He could be here in the city or on the sticks somewhere. Or oh, over here in the Mirasol Beach area. Uh, I somehow doubt that, though. Why? Well, it's a pretty fashionable spot. Well, I imagine Chase would uh, try to be as inconspicuous as possible. Yeah. So he's probably hiding out in the city here. Well, there are scores of hotels and rooming houses. I don't have enough men to... Oh, excuse me. Um, uh, what's that here? Yes? Oh, what's the address? Oh, thanks, old boy. Well, things are looking up, Mr. Dollar. Oh? Yes, a man answering Chase's general description just checked in at a hotel out in the north part of the city. That's the room at the end of the hall, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Let's not be polite, Inspector. Let's use the passkey the clerk gave us and barge right in. Right. Empty. How about that closet? Nothing. Windows open and there's a fire escape. Well, he apparently left in a hurry. You see there? There's clothes on the chair. Yeah, that jacket. It looks like the one he was wearing when he swiped my boat on Lagos Island. Did he just miss him? Inspector, I've been just missing him for the last ten days, and believe me, I'm getting tired of it. Mm, probably only by a few minutes, too. Sure, just a few minutes. But it might as well be a year. back to my hotel. I was beat. Being always one jump behind Tom Chase was getting on my nerves. Sure, he was still in Barbados, but where? At the rate I was going, catching him was turning into a full-time career. A career I was getting fed up with. 
Then as I entered my room, I heard a slight movement behind me, and I realized all of a sudden that I wasn't alone. Don't turn around, Dollar. Why? Hold it very still. Okay. Look, I can save you some time. If it's my gun you're looking for, it's in a shoulder holster left side. Thanks. You know, I just had a real wild idea. I said don't turn around and keep your hands in sight. Okay. My wild idea is that you're Tom Chase. Yeah. I'm Tom Chase. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Why not? Why did you do it? The embezzlement. Was it because of a woman? It was a woman. Was? It turned sour. Oh, where is she? That doesn't matter anymore. And where's the money? That doesn't matter either. You won't get it. I see. Next question. Why did you come here to my room, Chase? I've tried every trick I know to shake you, Dollar. None of them's worked. You've kept on coming. I can't stand it anymore. I'm sick of running. Give yourself up, Chase. It's too late for that. No, there's another way. I've got to take you off my trail once and for all. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry, but that's the way it has to be. Dollar, this is the end of the line for you. Here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this story. Tomorrow, the payoff. But who gets paid off? And how? And why? Well, the answers to those questions surprise me plenty. And maybe they will you, too. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us for the final episode of this story on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. It's Lola Chase, Johnny. Hang up, Dollar. Johnny, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, but right now I can think of a lot of places I'd rather be. I said hang up. Johnny, there's someone there with you. Look, Dollar. Is it Tom? It is Tom, isn't it? I'm coming over. No, don't do it. I'm coming over. Stay away, Lola. He has a gun and he means business. And every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Barbados, British West Indies. To the Home Office, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> item 28. Well, along about then, I figured this item would be around 200 bucks, burial expenses for me. Tom Chase was desperate, tired of running, and ready to take me off his trail for keeps. But Lola Chase's phone call to me seemed to have a strange effect on him. That was my wife, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was Lola. Why'd you drag her into this, Dollar? I didn't, Chase. She insisted on coming here to Barbados herself. 
Why couldn't she stay out of it? I suppose because she's your wife. That's all over. Yeah, I figured that when I found out it was a woman who arranged your hideout in New Orleans. That's all over, too. Turned sour, huh? Real sour. There's nothing left for me. Wait a minute, look, Chase. There's only one thing for you to do. Turn yourself in. Turn over what's left of the money it's and you'll It's too be... late for that, Dollar. There's only one thing left. Wait a minute. Killing me is not going to do any good, Chase. Somebody else will take over and keep after you until they get you. And they will get you sooner or later. You can count on it. I know. They'll keep coming after me. I can't run anymore, Dollar. I won't take it anymore from you or anybody. I just won't take it. Oh. <laughs> I never thought I'd be glad to get hit on the head. But just before I blacked out, I remember being very happy that it wasn't the bullet in the back I'd been expecting. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, Lola Chase and George Everson were bending over me. Are you all right, Johnny? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Oh, brother, my head feels like it was on a pogo stick. What happened, Mr. Dollar? Chase was waiting for me here in my hotel room with a gun. Why did he come here? For a very good reason. To take me off his trail for keeps. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But when you phoned, Lola, it seemed a time of a knot to learn that you were here in Barbados. He started talking wildly. Mr. Dollar, Lola and I'd still like to try the plan I mentioned to you earlier. Oh, look, Mr. No, Robinson. no, no, no. Hear me out. We could just talk You'd be to wasting your breath, Everson. Tom Chase is not about to turn himself in now or ever. I still don't get it, though. Get what? Why he didn't kill me just now. And why he didn't kill me before in the waterfront warehouse or on Lagos Island. He had plenty of chances. It's almost as if... Yes? Ah, skip it. Everson, suppose you take Lola back to her hotel. I'm going to check with Police Inspector Whitsitt. From what you tell me, Mr. Dollar, I'd say Chase was just about at the breaking point. Yeah, that's why we've got to track him down fast before he loses his head completely. Well, they're continuing our check of hotels and rooming houses. I don't think there's anything else we can do for the moment. Oh, excuse me. What's that here? Yes, in just a moment. For you, Mr. Donner. Oh, thanks. Hello? It's Lola, Johnny. He was just here. Chase, where? Here at my hotel cottage. Please come quickly, Johnny. I'll be there in ten minutes. I made it in eight. Lola was still trembling. Oh, it was horrible. He was talking wild, crazy. You see which way he went? Yes. I got to the window in time to see him drive off toward the mountain. Johnny, we've got to find him. He's out of his mind. We piled into the car and took off after Chase up a twisting, steep mountain road. <sighs> Tell me what happened, Lola. What'd he say? I've never seen him like that before, Johnny. He's sick. The things he said. Like what? But it was all over. There was nothing left for him. That he just wanted to see me once more before... Before what? He didn't say, but... Oh, hurry, Johnny. We can't take these turns any faster. I begged him to turn himself in. He said he wished he could, for my sake. But that he couldn't. Look, Lola, maybe he just took this route to cross the island. The way he was talking, Johnny. I don't think he was trying to get across the island. He... Wait a minute, hold it. Look, up ahead... That's the car he was driving. Parked beside the road. Next to a cliff, Johnny. Yeah. All right, Lola. You'd better stay right here in the car. Yes, I... I guess I'd rather. I walked to the edge of the cliff and looked down. His body was crumbled up on the rocks below. I climbed down. He was dead. All smashed up. It wasn't pretty. I climbed back to my car... Lola just looked at me with the big question in her eyes. All I did was nod. All she did was slump over on the seat. I drove her back to her hotel and phoned Inspector Whitsitt. Then I went back to my hotel. Expense account item 29, $3. Drinks for me. I thought about a lot of things. About Tom Chase, who'd had everything in his favor back in New York, but who'd embezzled 120000 had killed a man in New Orleans for trying to turn him in, but who hadn't killed me for trying the same thing, and who ended up at the bottom of a cliff in Barbados. I thought about Lola, who'd come a long way for nothing except the final heartache. And I thought about me, who'd also come a long way for nothing, period. 
The next day, I dropped in on Inspector Wissett at police headquarters. Well, Dollar, I've missed you. I, uh, I sort of took time out for a while, Inspector. I don't wonder. Well, Mrs. Chase, of course, identified the body. The inquest was this morning. Verdict suicide. Burials this afternoon. Here in Barbados? At first, Mrs. Chase wanted to take the body back to New York, but Mr. Everson felt that that would just be adding another painful experience to those she'd already been through. Oh. Yeah. Well, I still don't have the money, Chase embezzled, Inspector. No, and offhand, I'd say your chances of finding it were not too good. Did you find anything at all in Chase's pockets that might give me a lead? Oh, just the usual. Loose change, his wallet, cigarettes, some matches, a comb. Book matches? Yeah. From a waterfront bar. Well, let me see him, Inspector. Hmm. It's not much, but it's the only thing I've got to go on. I went down to the waterfront bar named on the match folder and started combing the neighborhood. I checked every hotel and rooming house. Three hours later, I was about ready to give up. And then I found it. Yep. Chase's last hideout. I searched his room, but the money wasn't there. I went back to the desk and checked the register again, trying to find out if a woman had checked in about the same time Chase had. No soap. But then I pulled out the sample of Chase's writing that Everson had given me in New York, and I compared it to Chase's signature on the register. A few wild ideas started chasing themselves around in my brain, ideas that began to fall into a crazy pattern. Item 301260, long-distance phone call to the Home Office of Universal Adjustment in Hartford. I asked Pat McCracken to run an errand for me. Three hours later, he called back from New York City with the answer. Yep. I'd come all the way to Barbados, but the case got solved in New York. I phoned Lola and Everson and asked them to come to the cemetery. Fifteen minutes later, we met at the freshly turned grave. Mr. Dollar, I must say you're not being considered of Lola. I'm sure you realize that coming back to Tom's grave here is a most painful experience for her. I'm sure you had a good reason, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, I did I wanted both of you to know what a jerk I've been in this investigation. Oh, don't say that. You've done everything that could be done. And I appreciate it. Well, thanks, Lola. But you see, for almost two weeks now, from New York to New Orleans to Barbados here, I've been chasing a dead man. What? I don't understand. I think you understand real well. Now, look here. If this is some kind of a joke, it's in very poor taste. It's no joke. I've got to hand it to you both, though. You engineered the whole deal with just two people. What are you talking about? Drop the act, Lola, the faithful, grieving wife. You had me fooled, but good. Look, Dollar. You told me you took a trip alone about the time Tom was arrested, Lola. Well, that was true, but it wasn't to Martha's Vineyard. You went down to New Orleans and rented a room under the name of Tom James. You were the other woman I was looking for. That's a lie. You don't know what you're saying, Dollar. Don't I? Freddie Quintana in New Orleans showed me a letter Chase was supposed to have written. It matched the sample of Chase's writing you'd given me in New York, Everson. Well, of course it did. That proves it. It proves that the sample you gave me in New York wasn't Chase's writing. I just checked by long-distance phone. You what? Oh, yes. Freddie Quintana played his part real well. But what he didn't know was he was going to get paid off with a bullet. That was the day you turned up in New Orleans, Lola. To kill him and shut his mouth. Dollar. Let him finish, George. Oh, there's not much more. You hired the second guy to pose as your husband and lead me a merry chase. That explains why he didn't kill me and why I was always able to pick up his trail again. I was supposed to. That's the way you were playing it. And all the time, the real Tom Chase was dead. You probably killed him back in New York when he was supposed to have jumped bail and disappeared. Are you through, Dollar? Almost. Except for the money. You are the embezzler, Everson. It was you who juggled the accounts. And after I ran into a dead end down here with a fake chase's death, you and Lola could live happily ever afterward with the dough. Go on. Of course, the fellow you hired to pose as chase didn't realize he was going to get paid off the same way Quintana was. What are you talking about? The way you helped him over that cliff, Everson, to make it look like suicide. How did you know? I probably wouldn't have tumbled to it if I hadn't checked his handwriting. Of course, you can't prove any of this. Like to exhume the body, ship it back to New York, and prove that it isn't the real Tom Chase? The body stays where it is, Dollar. Oh, put that gun down, Everson. They already know most of the story in New York. You're bluffing. Then why don't you call the bluff and find out? I think he's telling the truth, George. In that case? Yes. We've got to take care of him. Not we, Lola. Not anymore. What do you mean? I think we'd better just dissolve the partnership. Don't try anything like that, George. This was our idea together, and you're in it as deep as I am. And that's why I'm leaving, Lola. 
I wish it had worked out, but as long as it didn't... You can't do that! You've got the money! Exactly! I won't let you! Get back, Lola! We both went for Everson at the same moment. The shot spun her around and crumpled her. I grabbed the gun from Everson. I, I'm... I'm afraid it's not serious, Lola. If his aim had been better, he'd have done you a favor. Jerry. One thing I still don't get. Your husband wouldn't make any statement after his arrest. That means to me he knew what you were up to. And he loved you so much he was willing to take the rap. Tell me this, Lola. Why did you marry the poor guy in the first place? <laughs> Expense account total, $1,723. Lola and Everson were turned over to the authorities, and Everson gave up the key to a safe deposit box in New York where the embezzled money had been all the time. It also showed us the deserted spot on Long Island where he and Lola had hidden the body of the real Tom Chase. Remarks, Dear Pat, Next time you call me for an assignment like this one, I hope you get a busy signal. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a body suddenly rises from the grave to take the spotlight from a Hollywood star. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Wright. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Jack Edwards, Ben Wright, Virginia Gregg, Don Diamond, Forrest Lewis, and Richard Crenna. Musical supervision by Marigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.